to say it's the capacitors. They have a bad batch of capacitors. Like, because the one consistent thing that's, like, starting to show up is you have scorch marks coming, like, this latest one, it comes right off of, like, you have the scorch mark coming right off the capacitor, right? There was a really early one where somebody had a blown out capacitor, just, like, capacitor completely fried in pieces. Um... (laughs) That was like the first report, and there I was like, "Oh no, that's that's just a manufacturing defect. That's not a thermal issue." Right. Um, so this most recent one as well is just like the capacitors. Well, it's not blown to bits, but you can see that the solder on one side of it just like got shot right off. So that one's another like that's a capacitor failure. Um, and basically, all of the other ones are like varyingly more severe capacitor failures could cause those exact types of damage and then along with the fact that evga is claiming that oh there isn't a thermal issue right that would line up with why there isn't a thermal issue you have a bad batch of capacitors so i'm thinking it's like because i read through the like the capacitor failure stuff which i gave you a link to yeah and basically all of it's going to lead to pretty much short short circuit explosion sort of scenarios where the capacitor will be damaged um, partially. Over time it'll get worse. At some point it's going to short out and it's going to blow up. And since this isn't really temperature bound, um, that explains why it blows up at idle. Why it blows up without the capacitor actually being like properly powered or anything. You know, the one where it blows up from the PCIe slot right at startup. Um, it it ex- like especially considering that the thermals even without the thermal pads for most people won't be that bad, right? Consider like the temperatures yeah, the, you with... showed me from the testing. It that's like fine. That's normal for a VRM. Hundred yeah. degrees here, hundred degrees there is fine. It's just <laughs> like so. I I don't see. So it's basically I'm like, I'm almost certain that Evga just has a bad batch of capacitors on some of the cards. Hopefully not all of them. <laughs> that w- that would be a disaster, but. Um, I think they probably just have a bad batch of capacitors and they're just going up in flames and now it's really up to Evga to just state probably that that's the case right. and confirm it or disprove it because they obviously don't have a thermal issue with the MOSFETs because yeah, and we, we should, we tortured should them. talk about that too because um, in the testing I was doing you know, the hottest these things that I hottest I could get them was a really worst case scenario dumping CPU radiator heat with Prime 95 running straight into the VRM fan, like, three inches away. Uh, so ambient's, like, 40-ish, 41, as far as the VRM is concerned, or the, the GPU. And uh, we're hitting, like, with overclocking, with overvolting, with the old V BIOS and with no thermal pads, 126 Celsius on the back plate. And then about a hundred on MOSFETs number seven and number two, which we've seen are the hot spots. Yeah. So, and seven's actually running hotter than the number two. So number two is the one at the bottom. Right. Seven is like the middle one. Yeah. And we've seen a bunch of them where it blows up on the bottom one. Yeah. Yeah. No, because the power dis. Nah, I was just wondering about the the PCIe slot failure if the wiring was lining mm. up with that. Right. But no, so, it isn't. So then the, I think the thing to point out is, uh, for folks, is, you know, it, I think a lot of people Basically see... Basically be prepared that some cards are going to blow up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what's going to happen. Hopefully it won't be too many of them. And, yeah. And it won't be because of thermals as far as we can tell. Uh, yeah. So, yes. I mean, is... I think I think thermals will, like, cause the issue to show up faster. Yeah, but probably. they won't like they'll cause the deg- like they'll cause the downward spiral of the capacitor to speed up a little bit. But it's not like it's going to prevent it if you get the thermal pads or something. It's just going to blow up anyway. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I think the uh, one thing to point out though is that people I think see this hundred Celsius or hundred five Celsius or whatever on the VRM and just immediately think, "Holy crap, that's really hot." But these aren't. It's not the same as like a GPU or a CPU where 100 Celsius is TJ Maxx or greater than TJ Maxx, and you have a thermal shutdown. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, TJ Maxx for MOSFETs is 150. Right. <laughs> but that's like standard industry standard is 150 TJ Maxx, and so the casing. I mean, 
really high end stuff is rated at 125. Like right. they're rated to work at 125. There's MOSFETs actually. If I look at say a, um, I have a 68, yeah, a 6894, which like is really popular on AMD cards. That has a temperature rating which assumes. Okay, this is a fun one. Uh, ambient temperature 70 degrees. No airflow. No airflow except for the convection of the MOSFET itself. Right. No heat sink, nothing. 70 degrees ambient. And, yeah, I mean, the rating is crap, but it's a rating. Right? right. They tell you, yeah, you can run it at that, just don't overload it. <laughs> yeah. So, so really, like, it's, it's a case of, yeah, you can run VRMs really, really hot. Because the problem is, like, it's a combination of the current and the temperature. Because... Uh, the heat output of a VRM grows as it gets warmer. Right. So its efficiency decreases. And basically, at some point, you're going to end up... And the the efficiency is basically bound to the thermal junction temperature. So that's the internal of the MOSFET. So the external temperature just sort of, like... Because the way... It, uh, I, I'm going to be making a video about how VRMs <laughs> fail sometime soon. So I might as well get over this. So in a... In a MOSFET, you have your silicon. Well, it's not necessarily silicon, but you have a semiconductor, which right. is the actual switching component. And then you have all of the casing around it, which is the wiring hookup to the silicon, the ceramic that basically covers it and protects it from damage, uh, and all of that. And you basically have a temperature rating where the, the current specs for the MOSFET are basically set up that if your case of the MOSFET is at 100 degrees and you put this much power through it, the MOSFET is going to put out X amount of heat, which will lead to the internals to be at 150, which is perfectly safe. <laughs> and that's a good current rating. And if you exceed that 150 rating and continue 150 degree um, junction temperature, then the problem is that your resistance of the MOSFET is going to go up. The power dissipation because of that is going to go up as well. That's going to further increase internal temperatures, and basically you get a thermal runaway scenario right. where the extra heating is causing higher resistance, which causes extra heating, which eventually leads to it getting so hot that it blows itself to bits. <laughs> and actually, that's a thing because it causes a decrease in efficiency. That's actually, if you've ever seen power supply reviews from Johnny Guru, where yeah. he does some of the ones that blow up, actually, right. he always notes that you see a massive drop in efficiency, and then it just the efficiency starts falling, 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 and then the power supply eventually explodes. The same happens to VRMs. You basically see that your efficiency falls off a cliff because the internals are overheating. Right. And at, that's basically, yeah, I actually said that, that the best way to figure out if a VRM is about to fail is to monitor the efficiency. If it suddenly <laughs> starts going downhill, turn it off. Right. So, yeah, so, yeah, so that's I, basically I, sort of the scenario for actually getting the VRM to blow up is that it it's going to just overheat itself really, really quickly at some point. Right. Um, I think the question then is, now that we've done the thermal testing shown, obviously thermal pads and the VBIOS are beneficial, and if you own one of these cards, there's really no reason not to at least do the VBIOS. And the only reason yep. to not do the thermal pads is because of like fear that you're going to damage it or laziness, uh, or maybe you're not in a country they ship to. Um, yeah. So definitely do those, but with thermals not really being a source of concern, the question I think becomes, if I own one of these cards, should I be worried about damage? You know, we've seen... Two other components. Right. Yeah, at this point, like we can't actually say the cards will or won't fail because it seems to be just a manufacturing <laughs> defect and it's going to be random on how many cards it shows up. I, Yeah, so it's really up to Evga to figure out what batch of cards they have that got screwed up. Right. And then basically say, yeah, this set of serial numbers is bad. Right. These need to go. And they recall um, it or something. Yeah, and hopefully they'll figure that out sometime <laughs> soon, make a statement about it, but because I I mean, yeah, it's not thermals at this point. So right. they're right about claiming that the thermals are fine. Because they are. Um Yeah. And then as for damaging other components, if you have a bad power supply and you get a short circuit on a capacitor going bad, that power supply is probably going to go with it. And I mean, I've had a... I actually had like a, you know, not a great power supply, but like a decent unit where it didn't kill anything else except itself, but it was like 
12 volts short circuit, power supply dies. So I would be sort of, yeah, basically just make sure you have a good power supply if you have an FTW, right. but I'd hope most people have that anyway. It's so. expensive enough where they should in general. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, motherboard, what, should we be concerned about those? Um, I mean, there's big... been a few, like, there's been a few, like, I think there was one case where he said he had scorch marks that, like, reached all the way to the motherboard, but I think that's going right. to be superficial, just bits of the card just ending up you know, right. on the motherboard, not actual. Apparently, somebody had one where it cascaded where the power supply went out and the motherboard died with it. Mm. Basically, everything in the computer got <laughs> toasted. But that's, again, the power supply failed. Because right. the power supply is supposed to stop that. That's the whole point. Like, if you are if you have a short circuit in the system, the power supply should detect that uh, and shut down, which would protect all your components. If it doesn't shut down fast enough, then the issue is that the regulation of the power supply is going to go out of spec and it's going to just... Well, it's going to basically do what the GPU does to the rest of the system. Right. <laughs> Which sucks very badly, but, you know. Um, so I think that, that... I think the uh, sort of conclusion here, thermals largely were uh, not a red herring because they, it was an oversight to not have thermal pads on there and run the fan speed that they did. Like, those, the temperature is seem okay but they could be better and it was with not yeah, much they, effort they could definitely get better temperatures right. uh, um, but that wasn't the heart of the issue the heart of the issue seems like it's it's something that we can't necessarily figure out uh, at least yeah. not easily and it, it's uh, probably I would think at this point a manufacturing defect of some kind yeah and that's there's nothing and it might not even that. be a manufacturing defect from Evga's side if right. my capacitor suspicion is correct right so. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I guess if you have one of these cards, I don't really know what to <laughs> what to suggest. Don't like I would just say don't run it when you're not in the same room as the computer because that just like that just exasper like if that fails and you have a terrible power supply, like the nightmare scenario, let's think. Right. Okay, you have some horrific 500 watt power supply which will power an FTW just fine. You have an FTW which has the defect that's causing the VRM to blow up. The VRM blows up. You get a short circuit. Power supply goes out. And I have heard of power supplies where they go out and they melt their own casing because <laughs> of how terrible they are. It's just like they burn themselves out. Worst case scenario is going to burst in your house down, so just don't run it when you're not near <laughs> it so that you can catch right, it. Right, right. Because, like, but, yeah. But, but that's not... not this isn't like the most like, common. This is like so. I have no I like I've heard very few cases of this happening, like power supplies failing this badly. Right. And even then, it's like really, really rare. And like, it's not like cheap power supply. We are talking garbage, garbage. <laughs> absolute garbage. Like this is below the worst power. Like this is the. It's not even like Diablo Tech levels of bad, <laughs> right? Diablo Tech is considered a terrible power supply company. These are companies that take power supplies where it's like, you know, the the design is barely capable of half the power they rate it for. You know, it never saw a testing scenario. They cost like 20 bucks. Right. You know, like they don't even necessarily have PCIe connectors because they're that outdated. Uh, for most people, though, I don't think this is really... It's like, it's yeah. It's basically so, if, if your card goes, contact EVGA, get a replacement or a refund yeah. and buy something else. Uh, and if you haven't done thermal pad or VBIOS mods, you might as well do them. Because yep. it is better, and may, who knows, maybe it prolongs the life of the device. But, a little bit. Yeah. 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 <laughs> For all if, we if know. If you have a defective card, if you have a defective card, I'm pretty sure it'll just fail anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're not gonna. You're probably not gonna have warning signs. Like one of the ones we saw just failed on Windows desktop, allegedly, according to the user. Uh, I mean, I'll, I actually think that if it is the capacitors, I'll like that. Then it's totally reasonable because right. those things, like, once they short, like, because. They basically, the defects are all basically, there's just a crack or some kind of other failure in the capacitor which causes it to slowly get higher and higher, like more and more short-circuited <laughs> until eventually it reaches that, because like, capacitors aren't perfect like insulators, right? They right. leak a little bit of current, and basically if they're bad, then they'll leak more and more current until eventually the amount of current they're leak that's leaking through them actually just completely shorts out the capacitor. 
and then it blows up. So you can get that happening basically as long as the card is running. That can happen, right. essentially. I mean, so, we have so. thermal images from the thermal images from the Tom's hardware and everything, and you can actually see the capacitors because they're colder than everything else right. on the back of the card. So they have a fine like the, their card is obviously fine because, like, yes. If you had a thermal camera pointed at the PCB as it's about to die, you would see the capacitor be significantly right. warmer than everything else, and then it would get basically once it were thermal runaways, you'd see it spike really quickly. And then go, <laughs> become, yeah. yeah. It would go from something like I think once it shorts, it's gonna because we've heard people basically get flashes of white light, <laughs> and I did tell you that to get a red glow, you need 525 to get a flash of white light Celsius couple, for, for yeah. clarification. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna need like a couple thousand degrees, right. which is do it. Like it's basically gonna arc weld itself at that point because <laughs> you you have 12 volts shorted straight to ground at that point, right. right? Through a tiny little SMD component that's not meant to handle that kind of like it has no chance of dissipating that much right. that much energy in such a short period of time, which is why it's so dramatic when it's a relatively meh like failure <laughs> in terms of like grandio like right. you know how, how bad it is yeah so. yeah how uh theatrical it is yeah like the amount of no like the amount of drama you get for a very simple failure is rather high with capacitors failing because they basically short out and yeah that's why actually you have so much like the the scorch marks and such significant pcb damage because they basically get easily to the melting point of copper right so well, yeah. once you get a short circuit with that much power available because also you have the delay before the power supply notices that it's pu pushing too much current, then the OCP kicks in, and yeah, basically that's that's plenty of power to yeah, cause so the kind of drama that you see every if, every time. Uh, I, I will say it's worth kind of noting if anyone does have a card that fails, uh, send us a photo. You can like, yeah. tweet it at us at Cameras Nexus or. Uh, well, do you have a Twitter account, or what's the best way for people to send you on? Uh, I don't have a Twitter account, so... Post in your comments, maybe a, a video that you post or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, I have a the YouTube discussion section. Oh, I that's right. I do that, so they can just post it there as well. Right. Um, and I do want uh, back and front side. Yes. Because, depending, like, just seeing the back, you see damage, but, you know, you don't you know don't if know where. Of, yeah. Because if one side gets really, really hot, then it'll transfer through to the other side anyway. Um, yeah. So yeah, if it's send yeah. us photos if you if both sides send us photos both sides it's really easy you take out four screws to get the heat sink off that exposes the front side and then you take out the back plate screws and that'll take the base plate and the back plate off and the PCB is bare and at this point you shouldn't be worried about damaging it anyway because it's because not it recoverable just blew off. <laughs> yeah. yeah so just there's no off. reason to be afraid to take it apart. Uh, and then send it back to EVGA in a box, I guess. <laughs> Just throw all the parts yeah. in a box. Um, but that will help us catalog things and see if there's any yeah. any trend. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's that about recaps the issue. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you for joining me. Bill Zoid from Actually Hardcore Overclocking. He has a YouTube channel. Search for Actually Hardcore Overclocking. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, and I guess... It sounds like you've got a couple of VRM videos in the future anyway. Yeah. Most of them are VRM videos. So, but yeah. <laughs> so if you want to learn more about this stuff, go there.